how to approach a synthesis problem. You have to compare your substrate with your final product and answer two questions. Is there a change in the carbon skeleton? Is it gaining carbons, in which case you'll have to do an alkylation and go through an alkyne? Or is it losing carbons, in which case you'll have to do an ozonolysis? That can be done either with an alkyne or an alkene. Second, is there a change in the identity and or location of leaving groups or pi bonds? You have to drill down on all those one-step reactions, those one-step syntheses, and you've got to do a lot of examples. The more synthesis problems you do, the better you will be able to do on the test. Look at this transformation, for example. You can see that four carbons have been added to the initial five carbon skeleton. This means the synthesis will include an alkylation. But that's just a general idea of one of the steps we're going to have to go through. How do we deal with it step by step? We should also work backwards and do retrosynthetic analysis. Retrosynthetic analysis means starting with your final product and identifying a single change in it that you know how to bring about in one step. Since we know we have to do alkylation, we know we're going to go through an alkyne. So this is the alkyne that has the pi bond in the same position, namely between carbons 4 and 5. Next to this retrosynthetic arrow, we need to put in the reagents and conditions that will accomplish this step in the forward direction. Now our final product is a transalkene. That means we need to use the dissolving metal reduction. And our reagents will be solid sodium in liquid ammonia. What is the precursor to our 9-carbon alkyne? In other words, what goes here? Well, the clue is that we're starting with a 5-carbon alkene. So we need to put a 5-carbon alkyne there. So there's that alkyne. So to go from a terminal alkyne, this, to an internal alkyne with an extended carbon skeleton, we need to do alkylation. To do alkylation, first we use sodium amide to deprotonate the terminal alkyne and make the alkynide ion. Once we have the alkynide ion, we react it with a primary alkyl halide that has the correct number of carbons. We're adding four, so I'm using one iodobutane. One bromobutane or one chlorobutane would work as well. What is the precursor and what set of reagents would get us a terminal alkyne? We can go from either a geminal alkyl dihalide, where the two halogens are attached to the same carbon, or a vicinal alkyl dihalide, where the two halogens are attached to neighboring carbons, and do a double elimination reaction to get to the alkyne. The reagents we use to do the double elimination in high yield is first excess sodium amide, That'll give us the alkynide ion that'll precipitate out and maximize our yield by Le Chatelier's principle. Then we work it up with water to reprotonate it and get that terminal alkyne. But which of the two alkyl dibromides do we start from? Well, it turns out we can easily make the vicinal dibromide from the alkene in one step. To make the geminal dibromide, we would need to first have an alkyne. So if we treat our alkyne with excess HBr, we get the geminal dibromide. This would not be an efficient synthesis for us because we would still have to make the alkyne. That means we're going to go through the vicinal dihalide. 
what reagents do we use to go from an alkene to a vicinal dibromide? We simply need bromine, Br2, and carbon tetrachloride, one equivalent. We use the CCL4 as the solvent instead of water to avoid getting a halohydrin. Replace the retrosynthetic arrows with regular arrows, and you've got the reaction in the forward direction. So that's what it looks like in the forward direction with all intermediates shown. And if you wanted to write out the synthesis shorthand, you would just do the following. Around the reaction arrow, you would write your steps in sequence. If a transformation takes multiple steps, it's multiple steps in the summary. So, 1 is Br2CCl4. Since our second reaction arrow has two steps, this is 2 and this is 3. Since our third reaction arrow, again, has two steps, this is 4 and this is 5. And then the dissolving metal reduction is step 6.